Good evening, everyone. Uh, so we started this topic. Uh, we started this topic. Uh, this is about probing the matter, like finding the structure of an atom, and uh, using the particle accelerator. How we can accelerate the particle and observe their interaction. The reason why we use these particle accelerators because when we collide the particle at high speed so we can use uh, that energy will be converted into mass and we can use that energy to create massive particles so that's the main reason because the in mass energy conservation will be there like some of the energy will be converted into mass so we can create heavy particles using the particle accelerator but first how to find the experiment was there rutherford experiment rutherford gold foil experiment what he did he used a beam of alpha particles which is also known as a helium nuclei and he targeted this gold foil by the beam of alpha particle what is observation he observed most of the alpha particle passes straight few of them deviated from the path and few of them bounced back so if most of the alpha particles are able to pass through or penetrate through it shows that a major portion of the atoms or major portion of the gold foil is empty that's why most of the alpha particles are able to pass few of them deviated from their path so what it shows as we know the nucleus the central part of a nucleus and the alpha particle have the identical charges that's why like charges repel so they deviate from their original path and few of them bounce back why few of them bounce back because the mass is there in the nucleus which is responsible for this reflection so these are the observation most of the alpha particles uh, went straight through the foil with a low, little or no deflection it shows that major portion of atom is empty the second one is some alpha particle deflected to a large angle what it shows it shows a nucleus is a charge and few alpha particle are able to came straight back towards means bounce back which shows that the mass is concentrated at the center of the nucleus then to probe a matter we can also use a electron beam so if you are using an electron beam we can accelerate this the kinetic energy is equals to electrical energy and uh, electrical energy and the kinetic energy will be same so electrical energy can be used like electrodes can be used to accelerate this electron to a higher speed so kinetic energy is half mv square and electrical energy is voltage into charge so using this we can find the speed at which the electron will move through the region and if you want to remove the electron from the substance there is a photoelectric effect in as we discussed this in detail when light of certain frequency falls on the metal if the energy of the photon is greater than or equal to the minimum possible energy which is also known as a warp function then there will be a photoelectric effect or thermionic emission can also be done like he when we supply heat energy the metal tend to lose electron from its surface we call that as thermionic emission so both ways we can release electron and then we can use electric field to accelerate the electrons and we can use this beam of electron to investigate the matter so how we can use the beam of electron to investigate the matter so if you want to find or investigate the structure of the crystal so we can use x ray diffraction or we can use electron diffraction in x ray in x ray diffraction what will happen x rays are electromagnetic radiation so when the wave passes these are the wave front not the wave so when the wave passes through the crystal diffraction pattern are observed so what it shows it shows that the wavelength is comparable with the spacing the distance between the ions 
so diffraction occur when we carry out the similar experiment with electron beam so what we observe we can change the speed of the electron by using a different electric field so when we use a electron a beam of electron so what we observe we observe most it if it electron is a particle then it should pass straight or it should deviate from the path or it should bounce back but we don't observe this pattern what we observe when we are using electron we observe a similar diffraction pattern which we observe with x ray so what it shows it shows electron is not acting like a particle it is acting like a wave and the wavelength associated with this electron matches with the gap size so that's why diffraction occur and how we can find this wavelength we have the formula lambda is equals to h over p which relate the momentum and p is a momentum lambda is a wavelength h is a planck constant so this relation de broglie's wavelength which shows the wave particle duality means the particle can behave like a wave so in a electron probe what we do a beam of electron is fired as a crystal and we can change the momentum how we can change the momentum momentum is a product of mass and velocity if uh, non relativistic effects the mass will not change but as we increase the speed accelerate electron so the wavelength associated with the electron will get shorter so we can get more detail image of the lattice so a beam of electron is fired as a crystal and shows the diffraction pattern and this confirms that the wave particle duality means a particle can behave like a wave or wave can be a particle so if we want to get a more detail image like more diffraction so we should increase the momentum how we can increase the momentum by using a higher momentum is a product of mass and velocity mass is constant velocity we can change and how we can change the velocity we know kinetic energy is equals to voltage into charge so if we apply a greater voltage it mass and uh, will not change so speed of electron will change as the speed change the momentum will change increase in momentum will lower the wavelength so we can have more detail image of the lattice for linear particle accelerator so we use accelerator to uh, study the interaction of the particle so why we need accelerator because we want to produce more fractions more particles so to create more particle energy can convert into mass so if particle is accelerated to high speed and when we observe its collision we can use like form new particles so how a linear particle accelerator or a linac work so it consists of a cylindrical tube and each tube is different in size we apply an alternating voltage so if for example if there's a beam of electron so first positive negative electron is accelerated once electron reach the plate the one end the terminal changes but this change in terminal does not affect the electron it will move with a constant speed in this region why because there is no net electric field inside but the moment it will come out from the tube again the terminal change so this will become positive negative so electron is accelerated between the plate it is accelerated and every plate it is taking the same time means the time taken by electron if it was 0.1 second in plate a it will be 0.1 second that's why it should take a same time so that every time it will receive the same potential voltage otherwise if the time interval is different it will not receive the same voltage so as we know speed is equals to distance over time so it is taking the same time so time is equals to distance divided by speed so what happen the distance between the uh, distance traveled by the electron increases within the cylindrical tube but its speed is also increased like every section it is accelerated this part it is accelerated before entering tube b accelerated before entering tube c accelerated before entering tube d it is also 
so distance increase the length through which electron is passing increase the velocity is also increased but the ratio remains same so it will take the same time to pass through each tube and we can have interaction of electron with any other stationary object or it can be a moving object but in opposite direction moving particle and it release energy as well as produce different particles of different mass then as we know if we have a charged particle whenever the particles are charged these charged particle experience because whenever there is a charged particle moving charged particle it produce magnetic field so this magnetic field interact with a magnetic field of a permanent magnet so cross means the magnetic field is into if you want to find the force on the charged particle uh, so you will use fleming's left hand rule so fleming's left hand rule can be used to find so first finger in this fleming's left hand rule the first finger represent magnetic field which is pointing into the second finger represent direction of the particle and the thumb will represent the force which the particle experience so in this case the first finger as you apply the rule the first finger should point into second represent direction in which the particle is moving so you can see clearly the thumb is pointing up here so the direction of force is up so this for direction of the force cause the rotation or object will move in a circular path so it's easy to just apply the rule because sometime you don't have know the particle so you can apply the left hand rule if it follow the left hand rule it means it is a positive particle if it does not follow the left hand rule it means it is a negative particle then how we can find the force on the charged particle in a magnetic field so the formula because when an object is moving in a circular path the formula is mv square over r and when there is a magnetic field on the charged particle charged particle moving through a magnetic field the force experienced by charged particle is equals to bqv b is the strength of a magnetic field q is the value of the charge and v is the speed at which the particle is moving so if we compare the two equation this v will cancel with the square so r is equals to mv over bq or mv is a momentum so r is equals to p divided by bq so this formula can be used to understand the particle momentums as well using the curvature like you can see this is a small curvature another particle this is a large curve means greater radius so when we compare the momentum of a with momentum of b so as b is having a large radii so means it will have a greater momentum so you can ident using this the curvature of the curve path or curvature of the path you can identify the momentum as well for particles moving in a magnetic field so greater curvature means higher value of r it means greater momentum of the particle so radius increases with the increase of momentum as you can see this formula it shows momentum and radius are directly proportional to each other another type of particle accelerator is known as cyclotron so what we do in cyclotron in a cyclotron we use both electric field and magnetic field in linear particle accelerator or linac we only use electric field to accelerate and this linear particle accelerator should be several kilometer long to accelerate the particle to kilovolts but for cyclotron the advantage of cyclotron because we use a magnetic field so this uh, uh, particle can cover a greater distance in a circular path eventually it will 
reach out and have a collision. So example, if we want to accelerate proton, so we have a source of proton. This is, these are known as a Ds and outside we apply electric alternating current is there. So first what happen example, if the particle is coming out, so one of the D will be positive and the other D will be negative. So electron accelerated, uh, the proton accelerated. It can be the first one is because for acceleration, it should be opposite pole. So if there's a proton, so negative terminal and then positive terminal. So what happened, proton accelerated. But within the D, there is no, ex, uh, there is acceleration because of direction, but there's no change in speed because electric field is responsible for change in speed. But what happened, because there's a magnetic field between the Ds. So if this, if this was a top view, And this is a D. So when say proton accelerated, then deviate. Within the D, it is only changing the direction, accelerating because there's a change in direction, but there is no change in speed. Why there is no change in speed? Because there's no electric field within the D. But moment it will arise, so it will accelerate. And then again, it will deviate. Again, it will accelerate and deviate. Why the radius of the curve path is continuously changing? Because it is moment, its momentum is changing. And how the momentum change? Because we are using electric field, so velocity change. So momentum will also change. That's why the radius, even though there's a constant magnetic field, but the radius is changing. And eventually, we can have a collision at any point. So cyclotron is consisting of the two Ds which are connected to this high frequency AC supply. The particle accelerated in the electric field between the two Ds and the polarity of a D changes for every half cycle. So it will continue to accelerate. Purpose of the electric field is to accelerate. Purpose of the magnetic field is to deflect. Is it clear? Is it clear? the cyclotron okay so you can see this is a passage the path which the particle will so it is accelerated then deviated then accelerated then deviated accelerate deviate and eventually it will reach out and collide with other This is exam style question. <clears throat> so typical uh, student uh, answer is there. The diagram below represent a cyclotron that is used to accelerate the proton. The proton enter the accelerator at the center and spiral out. So why do the proton accelerated moving from one half to of the cyclotron to the opposite half? So what is the reason for the acceleration? The reason for acceleration, because the opposite Ds are there, opposite potentials are there. That's why it is accelerated. The largest radius of a circular path that a proton can follow is equal to radius of a cyclotron. Means that's a complete path which it takes. Shows that the maximum speed of a proton is equal to BQR divided by M. And so how we can represent, because when it is moving in a cyclotron, the centripetal force, because it's moving in a circular path, so centripetal force and centripetal force is due to the magnetic force. And centripetal force is given by MV square over R and magnetic force is BQV. We can solve this and find the speed Then calculate the maximum speed of a cyclotron. The magnetic field strength is 0.6 Tesla. Q is the charge of a proton, 1.6 exponent minus 19. R 
because the radius is there of this cyclotron which is about uh, 0 0.8 meter they already mentioned divided by mass mass of uh, electron is uh, one mass of proton is 1.67 exponent minus 27 kilograms so you substitute and you will get 4.5 exponent but if you check norm as they mentioned here in this the diameter so if you if a student substituted instead of radius a diameter it will be 4.5 exponent 7 and it is very high speed when it move closer to the speed of the light then relativistic effect the mass does not remain constant that is why r should not be 0 0.8 it should be 0 0.4 Then state difference in the path followed by a charged particle being accelerated by synchrotron compared to that cyclotron. So synchrotron is using a variable magnetic field. Basically what happened, because if in a cyclotron we use a constant magnetic field and that magnetic field is only able to change the direction, but because the speeds are different, that's why it is having a spiral path. But in synchrotron what we have we have variable magnetic field magnetic field is not constant as the speed changes we change the strength of a magnetic field so that it will remain in its path circular path so the radius of a circular path that the particle follows is kept constant and how it is kept constant the, the particle travel in a uh, evacuated chamber and that is having a shape of a ring So we use magnet, different magnetic field, like the strength of the magnetic field in cycle, cyclotron is constant, but in synchrotron, it is not constant. It is continuously changing variable magnetic field, which cause the path to be same. Otherwise, if it was a constant, because the constant magnetic field as the speed is continuously changing, so it will have a spiral path. Then the particle detectors, basically after accelerating the particle, we carry out the like inter the one particle collision collide with another one. And then we detect these particles. So to, for particle detectors, what we can do, different particle detectors can be used. We can use a Wilson cloud chamber or we can use bubble chamber. So you don't have to work, uh, learn the detail of how these chambers are working. But the basic idea is that because they contain particle like one is uh, uses a super cool vapor, another one is superheated hydrogen. So both cases, what it causes when the particle enter a region, the charged particle, not a neutral. So these charged particle cause ionization. Ionization means they knock out the electron. So when they knock out the electron, these radiation this cause energy to emit out and we can trace this energy which is emitted out and we can sketch a path through which the particle is moving so this is a cloud chain the working you don't have to learn basically what happened source of the particle and so when the radiation enter these radiation cause ionization energy is emitted out and using this energy, we can trace the path of the particle. So example, you have paths are shown. First thing, uh, explain the principle of cloud chamber for detecting the particle. But what is the basic principle? The cloud chamber basically uh, the vapors are there when it become ionized they lose energy so a cloud chamber contain a pad of a soap and ethanol which vaporize when the pressure is reduced and incoming ionizing particles ionize the air in the chamber and ethanol on a trail of ions making the path visible so basically why the path is visible because the particles uh, are causing ionization if it's a strong ionization then it will be a continuous and a broad path. If it is uh, 
weak ionization then discontinuous paths will be there or thin line the track were obtained from for particle moving in a magnetic field at a right angle to the plane as shown explain what can be deduced about what is happening at a place a and b so at a what is happening at point a a neutral particle at uh, at a the particle has decayed into two particle and one is uncharged and at b an uncharged particle has decayed into two oppositely charged so what we can say because look the particle was moving in this direction and it deviate from the path so because there was a initial path if there is a initial path so it shows that originally it was a charged particle but because the momentum should be conserved so if it changes the direction so there should be another particle because the initial momentum should be equal to the final momentum so if, if this was the original path and it deviated from its path so and but there is no other particle we see but there should be other particle why there should be other particle because to conserve the momentum if initial what is the initial momentum the final because if only the direction changes here means the momentum is not conserved the momentum before and momentum after is not same because the direction you can see are so there should be another particle to conserve the momentum but that particle path is not visible so what it shows it shows that there will be uncharged particle what about b for b we did not see the original track and suddenly we see two particles are in opposite direction so if two particles are in opposite direction so what just gives an idea this shows that b decayed into oppositely charged particle and which are having momentums now you can see what difference there would be a track uh, of electron and the proton in the same magnetic field so what will be the uh, difference in a track for first one so the proton track would be curve in opposite direction and would be thicker and shorter because the ray, they have more mass but because they are moving at a slower they have higher momentum moving at a slower can have a short range that's why the length of a track will be shorter is it clear the track in a cloud chamber or it can be a bubble chamber and you can see some of the tracks example if the magnetic field is into so first finger represent magnetic field second represent direction of the particle thumb is pointing up so positive particle will go up negative will move down so this will be the track for fast moving particle so fast particle make a thin curve path now what happen as a particle is losing its energy it will have a spiral path why spiral because it's continuously losing its energy so speed is decreasing as the speed decreases the momentum will also decrease so radius will decrease so particle lose the kinetic energy through ionization so the track is getting mo more curved and less thicker the radius is decreasing basically and why it is get because the particle is continuously losing its energy at a greater rate that's why the track is getting thicker if slow and a massive particle so this will give more ionization so thicker track will be there and a decay into a charged particle and a massive particle 
which itself decay into oppositely charged. So you can see. So basically, what happened? This track first a particle was moving at a high speed. It decay. This decay produced two particles: one neutral particle, another one charged particle. But because why the uh, the path is not a curve here, even though there is a magnetic field, it shows that it is having a very high momentum. That's why the path is not curved. And then this neutral particle further decay into particle and like positive and negative particle, which are having a different momentum. You, why? Because you can see their curves. The radius is not same. So similar, <coughs> what A is representing electron and positron curve in opposite direction. So that's for A. B is electron loses energy uh, through radiation like an inward. So electron was moving. It is losing energy, so radius is decreasing. C is the particle coming to rest, leave a dense track. Near the end, as it ionizes power, as its ionizing power increases, the dense track here refers to greater ionization. For D, because originally there is no path, and then it there are deviate into two, so it shows a neutral particle which cannot be seen because we cannot see neutral particle; only charged particle can be seen. And but it gives two tracks in opposite direction. So what it gives an idea: two charged particles are there, which are traveling in a straight line in absence of magnetic field, or, or if there is a magnetic field, it will be a curve. But it, if even there is a magnetic field and the particles, uh, the path is not curved, so it shows that they are having a high momentum. And the charged particles emitted a neutral particle, which cannot be seen. But the thing is, there should be a neutral particle so that. There will be a conservation of the momentum. This is a typical exam style question. A high energy gamma photon enter a bubble chamber and produce electron and positron. So electron and positron, but photon is a neutral. That's why you don't see the track of photon. But at this point. At this point, the photon decay, and it decay into two particle: electron, uh, positron, and electron. Then we have to explain the uh, magnetic field is into. So, if the magnetic field is into, you have to identify which is proton and which is sorry, which is positron and electron. So, first finger, your first finger should point in. The second represent direction of the particle. So, thumb is pointing up. So if thumb is, when I apply the rule Fleming's left hand rule, my first finger should they already mentioned magnetic field is into. So my first finger should point into second represent direction of the particle, and direction of the part because it cannot be other way around. Like it cannot have direction as the momentum is not increasing, energy is decreasing, speed is decreasing due to ionization. So it will always be in opposite. So first finger represent magnetic field, second represent direction of the particle. And thumb is pointing towards center. So when I apply a left hand rule for path B, it it follow left hand rule. So it means the path B is due to the positive particle, or which is positron here. So opposite. If I apply a rule, first first finger represent magnetic field, second represent direction, but it is not following the left hand rule. So it means this is a negative particle. So the particles are moving in a circular path due to magnetic field. And direction of the magnetic field is perpendicular to direction of the motion. The two particles are oppositely charged because their curvatures are different, opposite direction. This the particles spiral in opposite direction. That's the reason. Then using a Fleming's left hand rule, B follow the Fleming left hand rule. So B is positively charged, and it is a positron, and A is electron. Then the fact is. The both tracks have the same curvature or radius, so shows that both have the same mass to charge, or we can also say both have same momentums. Is it clear, this one? Because you will find a question 
uh, in which you have to explain the path why the particles took that specific path. Another picture which shows the movement of the particle. So the question is, at x an incoming charge particle, at this point x incoming charge particle interact with a stationary proton. So this, this is a charge particle is coming and it interact with a stationary proton and produce a neutral lambda particle, a neutral kion particle, both of these particles later decay into other. With the reference to photograph, describe and explain the evidence for or this event. Like how this photograph is an evidence that this happened. So why? Because after X, you don't see the path. So if you don't see the path, so it means there are neutral particles are there. And neutral particle, they went on and later we see the path. So why we see the path? So it shows that the neutral particle decayed. These neutral particles, they went on and seen track in V shape, decay into two charged particles uh, to conserve the charge and newly formed charged particle move in different angle to conserve the momentum. So this was about the particle physics, particle accelerator. We are done with particle physics. Uh, the last topic is left, which is about magnetic field. And we'll discuss that on Thursday. So we'll complete unit four on Thursday. Any doubt related to the class? Okay, so I'll end the session and share the recording.